morning and welcome to Pipe Tools. Today we're here talking about the Severn Secor 8 field correlator. If you suspect that there's a leak on a pipe, maybe you've used your Severn T10 acoustic, electroacoustic leak locator to listen to hydrants and valves and you suspect that there's a length of pipe that has a uh, noise on it that sounds like a leak. The next step in the process is to correlate. Correlation in the water industry is used to locate the position of a leak sound along a known length of pipe. It does this by using two very sensitive contact microphones. In our case we use the Severn EM30 microphones. And with the use of a transmitter we can capture noise samples. These noise samples are filtered and then transmitted to the Secor 08 receiver for processing. Theoretically, if both microphones hear the same noise, then the location of that noise can be determined by a mathematical formula and the measurement of the time delay that one microphone hears the noise before the other microphone. To accomplish this, the, the Secor 08 receiver uh, needs some data. The input data that you have to provide the, the unit is the number of pipe sections that you're working with, the distance along the pipe between the microphones, the pipe material, and the pipe diameter. This enables the Secor 08 to process this data to give you the footage between microphone number one and microphone number two where the potential leak noise comes from. Once we've entered the data that the correlator requires to perform its function as a correlator, uh, we take 32 noise samples and based on the noise conditions at the time, it gives us a result of so many feet from transmitter one, so many feet from transmitter two. And that gives us an opportunity to look at that particular point and see if there's a valve there or a water service there or some sort of connection that might give us a uh, indication that uh, a, a leak noise might be emanating from that position. Additional samples can be taken by using the continue option. Manual filtering is also possible to, say, clean up a correlation. Uh, sometimes we can uh, or would want to uh, filter out various noises that we feel are interfering with our correlation. And to give us optimal results, uh, we might use the manual filtering. There is also a zoom function that can be helpful. Uh, this zoom function allows you to adjust the cursor on the screen so that you can see the approximate location, the footage of where uh, a, a peak uh, would be. So uh, you move the cursor to the, the peak that you want to look at to determine uh, where that is along the, the length of your pipe. Water leak detection, including correlation, is part art and part science. Because the information that uh, we input into the uh, device is imperfect, uh, we don't know exactly uh, the location of the pipe, we don't um, know whether there are uh, turns in the pipe, um, sometimes uh, pipes can be offset which throws off the sound velocity in uh, producing a result. Uh, the sound velocities in the table are based on new pipe, based on uh, laboratory uh, sound velocities. In a section of pipe, repairs could have been done to the pipe to, uh, uh, to not only repair the pipe, but that also affects the sound velocity. So we talk about part art and part science, meaning we should use the correlator in the sense that it's an aid to help us pinpoint and bring us to a spot within the section of pipe that we're, we're looking at. To build our confidence, we should do uh, 
uh, multiple correlations from various places. And also keep in mind that the longer the distance between our microphones, the amplification, the uh, exaggeration of errors comes into play. So the cl closer your correlations are, the more accurate they should be. Kind of a general rule. This comes with time, practice, patience. And before you excavate or before you call it a leak, confirm by using a ground microphone. Do servo correlations whenever possible. And if you have the contact points, uh, listen and always confirm before you call it a leak. It is, after all, part art and part science. The Secor 08 kit, the field correlator, comes with two high sensitivity microphones with uh, magnets. Several different sizes of magnets can fit on this particular microphone. The unit also comes with two transmitters marked 1 and 2. To uh, turn this device on we just plug in the microphone and at that point we have a choice of picking the whole Hertz range to listen to or if we're working with non-metallic pipes, we just might want to listen to the lower hertz range because um, the noise does not travel as far or as well on non-metallic pipes as it does on metallic. So we have a certain amount of filtering capability right here on the transmitter. The kit also includes the Secor uh, receiver. The Secor receiver can store 25 high resolution correlations, 50 non high resolution uh, uh, correlations. It also has the ability to, to record noise samples. To use this device in conjunction with the software, also included is a communications cable that allows us to connect the Secor 08 receiver with the tower on our desktop. The kit includes the Severin headphones, various chargers. This one is for uh, charging uh, while in a vehicle. and the uh, operating instructions. And lastly, the case. The case is a wired case, which gives us the ability to charge both outstations and the receiver. To do a correlation, we need two contact pipe points on a pipe. Right now, we're gonna place transmitter number one and microphone number one on this uh, isolation valve. Microphone number two is already placed down the street. So I always like to place my microphone first. It's a good way of not adding noise to your correlation. So if we place the, the microphone so we make good contact with the pipe, which we have done, then we plug the microphone into the appropriate jack should notice two things. One, that the power button has come on, the power light has come on, and that uh, the hertz range is set for listening to the full hertz range. We're listening to 8-inch metallic pipe right now. If we were listening to plastic pipe or a non-metallic pipe, we might want to press the hertz uh, button and just listen to the lower end of the hertz range. But once again, since we're, we're listening to uh, metallic pipe where the Hertz range uh, of the noise tends to be higher. We'll, we'll keep it set on the full Hertz range. Transmitter one is now set. Before I start a correlation, I usually like to check to make sure that we can hear a noise on both microphones and that our transmitters are transmitting properly. To do that, we just hit the menu key, scroll down to components, hit enter. There are two ways to enter information. We can press 
this button here or we can hit the enter button here. In our case, we'll just hit the enter button there. We can see by the indication here that we have transmission off of both transmitters and our batteries are full. We're listening from zero to 3000 hertz and our Secor 08 receiver uh, needs uh, some more battery. We can now uh, uh, go back to menu and listen by hitting the enter button again. We can listen on channel one, channel two, and channel one and two together. This gives us the ability to, to listen and see if we can hear a leak noise to make sure that our uh, microphones are placed properly. The unit now is asking us to enter pipe data. We can say yes to that by pressing the enter button. It's asking us, do we have one section, two sections, or three sections of pipe? In our case, it's one section of pipe. It's one section of cast iron, eight inches in diameter. So we'll hit enter. Is it now asking us the distance? We can enter the distance in two ways by either using the scroll buttons to scroll up and over. And we have 572 feet, we'll hit enter. It's asking us now for the pipe material. In our case, it is cast iron. And we will scroll down to eight inches. We'll now scroll down to start. It reviews the information that we have given it. One section of pipe, 572 feet, cast iron, eight inch, and that's the sound velocity that's in the chart, in the table contained within the device. We hit enter and the unit is starting to take its first 32 noise samples. And as it proceeds along you'll notice that there are many 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 spikes in this and the reason for that is we're working on a pipe that does not have a leak on it right now. We do have some draw and uh, we looks like we have a little bit of uh, power harmonics. In the squ little square box, the time delay is 116 milliseconds. That's the time that the, the uh, microphone hears the noise uh, first, um, and uh, then the, obviously the next one would be second. If we wanted to continue, we can sc scroll down to continue, hit enter, and take more readings to try and clean up our correlation. Every once in a while, you'll see that the correlator will start. It's trying to um, not contain uh, extraneous noise that doesn't belong in the correlation, such as a car going by, or the wood chipper chipping, or the bird or the dog going by. As the correlation proceeds, we're up to 78, 79, 80 <coughs> noise samples. <coughs> the correlation is stopped because a car is going by. Okay. With the more samples that were taken, we noticed that the time delay has been reduced to 49.8, and the distance from transmitter number one is 188 feet, approximately, and 384 from microphone number two. So if this were a real live leak, what we would do would be go out 187 feet from one and we take a look around and, and see if there were any services or any additional contact points there that we might listen to to see if there was a leak. Well, we're wrapping up our uh, demonstration of the Secor 08 car later with uh, the packing up of unit number two. We wanted to say thank you for joining us at Pipe Tools today for the video of the Secor 08 field car later.